So I want to talk a little bit about our co-pilot solution. So our co-pilot solution uh, actually handles EKS on Cluster Autoscaler as well as Carpenter. And really, it's at its core, it's, it's an intelligent provisioner that looks for the most cost optimal node at the time of scale. Uh, it is organizationally aware, so it will take in consideration any sort of commitment from RIs or savings plans that you have. It will leverage the spot market. But at the end of the day, it's going to look for the greatest cost reduction while also maintaining or enhancing the reliability of the nodes uh, that make up your cluster. I've got one down the bottom that I just want to show you some of how this works. So we have a node class and you can have more than one. You can click on create. It's going to have everything with a preface of anops. This is where you can quickly bring in uh, those discovery tags or you know the name of the cluster, however you want to look at the subnets uh, for this cluster. You can do the same thing with your security groups. Right. I've actually got this tagged out just a little bit, so I'm going to do my co-pilot demo for Grego. You're also able to pull in an IAM role that we have gathered from API calls. If it is something that you just created and might not be here, you can copy paste. Uh, mine happens to be in here, so I'm just going to select that. And then the user data area is where you could create any level of bash or additional commands that you want when the node instantiates uh, to go ahead and run. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this because I already have one created. The other thing that we can do is then create a node pool. Again, I have one, but I'll show you what it looks like. You're able to pull in the node class from the list that you've created, the availability zones that you want this to operate within. Now, keep in mind that depending on how your cluster is architected, uh, you may be selecting availability zones here that are not in use or you don't have permission to connect into. For capacity type, you can do on-demand and spot or both. You can also specify a max limit of vCPUs in memory. An option is for node consolidation, so we'll continuously look. And if a more uh, cost-effective or more reliable or some combination thereof node is available, we'll start draining the nodes, I'm sorry, draining the, the pods off one node to move them onto this newer node to save you some money. Now, uh, taints and labels can be assigned here as well. But what I really want to call out is our instant selection. This makes life a lot easier for you and your engineers. You don't have to pour through charts and tables and API call returns uh, to find out just what instances and families meet the requirements, you can just use our interface, pull in an instance category, such as CPU manufacturers, and then from our prefab list, select the ones that are important to you. Once you start bringing in information here, you'll see that some of the families have this little circle with a check mark. That means that it's an eligible instance family, meaning it will meet the criteria that you specify. You can add more than one thing here, and this is where things get really, really helpful. So if I do like vCPU count and I set that to a minimum of four, that's going to change some of what's available. If I just change that to something much bigger, you'll notice that uh, some of the T classes become obsolete. Same thing as the C1. I can add some additional stuff there if I want to, to make a more narrow focused. But for now, I want to focus on the select all eligible instance families. That's going to pull all of the ones that meet that criteria into this node pool. And I can also enable weight, give it a higher weight than what I'm currently using, which means that this node pool is going to take priority over the ones that you already have. And you can have multiple with different weights. So basically it, it's a priority arrangement. I'm going to click cancel on this just because I have one. Uh, and really where this all comes to play is that if you are looking at your node claims, you know, you can see that this is actually being pulled. It's a T3 extra large. And I also have another node of R4 2XL, uh, one in one F and one in one D where I have everything configured. And this is being pulled from that node pool that I've selected. 
If I look at the node pool from my default, I've got C class here. And then if I look at my node pool that I've got specified, I've got all of these others. So just more proof, it's actually pulling in and using the NOPS Copilot version uh, and getting a better price with better reliability. Mm -hmm.